with the corner. It's towards Joe Hardo, and if anything, he jumped up in front of Ali in and around. It's another wretched night for England at a major tournament. Irish ecstasy combined with Welsh agony on a night where it was winner takes all. Ireland are the winners. Ireland go to the playoff. Martin O'Neill has sculpted the most dramatic smash and grab here at the Cardiff City Stadium. Oh, that's the cruelty, and that you know we're missing out on the chance to go to a World Cup. We should still be playing now. We should still be playing. And a reminder of our top story once again. Following prolonged talks and negotiations between the Premier League and football associations of England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, it has been agreed that the association clubs will be inducted into the top tier of the English football pyramid from the beginning of the 2017-18 season. All appropriate players will therefore be transferred from their respective clubs in time for the forthcoming season, after which time the association clubs will be prevented from making any new signings. The decision has been met with cautious optimism in most quarters, with high hopes of garnering a better dynamic ahead of the forthcoming 2018 World Cup in Russia. However, fans of the five temporarily evicted clubs have condemned the decision, accusing the associations of acting without respect or due integrity for the history of the football game. And in other news, Sandy McCluskey scored a hat-trick as Clyde qualified for a third successive Champions League final over Barcelona. <laughs> All right, folks, welcome to the first of an experimental series on my channel. It may well be the last, but it's going to be an interesting one, I think. A lot has been said, you heard it in that little radio snippet. A lot has been said, probably, about the way the home nations have certainly struggled. England probably do the better. They do generally qualify, but beyond that, it's an epic failure all round for England. They just continue to disappoint. And why is that? Is it because... Simply, they don't know each other. We have the age-old age old question about 10 years ago. Can Gerard and Lampard play, Lampard? Lampard play together? Well, now we're going to see if, if the England team can play together and can they be successful. Because what they are, they're all going into the Premier League, as the radio article suggested. So we've got England, we've got Scotland, we've got Wales, we've got Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. They're all club sides. And hopefully what this will do is it will demonstrate who is the uh, the power of the home nations, if you like, the British Isles. Um, and it will also give us an indication of whether the, the players playing together, obviously dynamics is a big thing in, in this year's football manager. So will that translate into better performances as a country? So the country, the nations, the call-ups, they still exist. And yes, there will be players who are not in these squads who will be called up. There are notable exceptions, uh, some of which I will probably be completely unaware of. But I've done my best to get what I feel is a representative England squad, Scotland squad and so on. So this is season one. We'll see. We'll probably do until we get to Euro 2020 and see if it has any lasting effect on not just the countries, as I say, or the clubs' countries, but also the clubs as a nation. And also, don't forget, the Premier League has been affected. There's a lot of players who've been just pinched from big clubs here and, and also filters down. Let's let's face it, England have Jack Butland. Stoke do not. That's a big problem for Stoke. As a Stoke fan, I know that without Jack Butland, we have a questionable choice of goalkeepers. So, will they invest in that area? Tottenham, for example, lose Harry Kane, Deli Alley, Ben Davis, Kevin Trippier, all go. So there's notable missing players from every major club. Who will benefit from that? Hard to say. Maybe Arsenal. They don't have as many English, Scottish, Irish, whatever. They're only really losing a couple in Aaron Ramsey, etc. So will they benefit? That's what we're going to have to see. Let's have a run through for each of the squads. Okay, so there's your main England team. It's, um, I mean, there is, there are some more players than this. They're in, they've chucked them in the under twenty threes, I think, just to. Interesting. They put Gary Cahill in the under twenty threes. Uh, Jake Livermore, Harry Winks, Tammy Abraham, Fraser Forster, and Jordan Pickford. So they've they've pretty much decided who will be their first, their main squad, if you like, and it's it's pretty strong, isn't it? Let's be honest. Uh, if even if you include Harry Maguire, uh, no, he's he's a, he's quite good. A few injuries, of course, persisting from. The start of the game, I haven't removed any injuries because it's not just a one-season save. I don't see it as. So we'll see how many seasons we actually get through. So, yeah, that's that's the England squad. Um, it's pretty strong. It's predicted to finish first in the Premier League. I mean, we'll have a look at the major predictions 
in a minute, but that is England, Scotland. Scotland lines up like that. You can see they've even got a team in. They must have played a friendly or something like that. So that's their team. Uh, it, it's probably not as strong as England, but I think, you know, the, again, it's team spirit, isn't it? That's that's the key that's going to drive these, these clubs together. It's the dynamics as well. I don't know if you how much you've played FM18, but on dynamics it does talk about having players of one nationality. Uh, that can help. So obviously all these players are Scottish and so on for the other nations or clubs, I suppose. Let's have a quick look at Wales, led, of course, by Gareth Bale as their main man, but also Joe Allen, Aaron Ramsey in there, Ben Woodburn coming through. I think goals is going to be their, their issue. Ben Woodburn will provide the goals probably in time, but until that point, it is, uh, is Hal robson Carney going to be the man. Yeah, so there's you know th again, they've got a good squad. Let's, let's face it. Ireland, let's have a look at the Republic of Ireland. So, again, it's probably a side that's weaker on paper, but again, it's team spirit that's going to bind it together. Unfortunately, Seamus Coleman out for a few months with that broken leg. And, uh, again, key player James McCarthy out for a couple of months with a torn ham. Uh, Jeff Hendrick as well also out for a few, three months with a thigh strain. That's significant. Again, it's going to be goals, isn't it? Shane Long's going to be the man. And will he be able to supply the goals ahead of players like Scott Hogan? That kind of thing. It's going to be interesting because a lot of these players, especially for Ireland, Northern Ireland, they're probably making the step up into the Premier League that they wouldn't otherwise have had. So it'll be interesting to see maybe how they adapt to Premier League football. And let's just have a final quick look at Northern Ireland. So a lot of names in there that you probably recognise, a lot of injuries. They've been a bit unfortunate, haven't you? It makes you wonder. Again, goals, really. Carl Lafferty is injured, so it's going to fall. I mean, he's only out for a little bit, actually, so he'll be back. But it'll fall at the moment. I mean, he's out for a long time, isn't he? 12 months of damaged cruciates. So it's Connor Washington leading away with Josh McGuinness. And again, it's going to be it's going to be goals and defending that's an issue in terms of goalkeeping. Obviously, Northern Ireland have got quite a solid defence. Pretty much Northern, uh, excuse me, West Brom's defence with McCauley and Evans. So that's another point, you know. That's West Brom's back line of strength. Gone. Gone. Completely gone. So where will we see these teams end up in the Premier League? Let's have a quick look at the preview. Just down this left side, you can see that England are predicted favourites for the division. I should say, they're marked as promoted. They've replaced the bottom five sides in the Premier League indiscriminately, I might add. They're just simply the bottom five sides. Obviously, that's the three promoted sides plus the two teams that finished in 17th and 16th position. So that's Newcastle, Huddersfield, Brighton, and it's also, bear with me, Burnley and Watford, I believe, who've been replaced. They are the teams that go into exile for, for five years or whatever it will be. And yeah, sorry to sorry to any fans of those clubs, but you're, you were simply the bottom five ranked teams in the Premier League at that point. So England favourites. Then you see that it's a clutch then. Ireland, Wales and Scotland... 7th, 8th, 9th, and Northern Ireland in 11th. So the game is not predicting that any of these teams should struggle. And that might be because of the stats that we've given each club. We've boosted each club with finances that they won't need. Every club is massively rich. You can see there they've, uh, England are rich, and this replicates across all of the, the five teams. Uh, they're rich. They've got a transfer ban until 2025. That'll be longer than we expect to stay in the save. And basically, all the tributes have been set to 20s. So... Every team should be maxing out their stadium. They've got lots of money so they can invest off the pitch, of course, because they're not able to make any transfers in. They can sell players, but they'll be daft to unless they're really rubbish. Um, they don't need the money to sell players. That's the key. So if they do sell a player, it's simply because he's not good enough. Otherwise, everything's at 20s and, and maximum reputation. So these are the biggest these clubs can be. They are the biggest five clubs in the Premier League on reputation. And it's purely based on playing squads to see who will finish where and whether or not maybe England can win the Champions League. There's an idea. So let's get season one underway. We'll return 1st of June, or there or thereabouts, 2018, and we'll see what's, uh, what's occurred in the old Premier League and who's won what. Well then, folks, the season is over, and it looks as though it's been quite a dramatic season there is your final league table. Man United champions, 84 points. Our highest performer, England. But cast your eyes to position 20. We'll ignore the fact that Stoke have gone down. That's... that's. Uh, we'll blame England's Jack Butland for that. Ireland. Republic of Ireland finishing rock bottom with 30 points and relegated to the championship. I toyed with the idea of only loading the Premier League for speed. Glad I didn't now. So we will be keeping an eye on the Republic 
in the championship and look further above who survived for in 17th and 16th, but Northern Ireland and Scotland. So three of the five have ended up having difficult first years in the competition. I suspect that's only going to get worse as the competition, or rather the seasons, drag on, purely because these sides are not going to be strengthening their teams with any of the money that they've got. But they will be able to keep the players, you'd assume. Ireland will be under pressure maybe to sell, but they haven't got replacements, so it's not going to be an option for them. They don't need to. Wales had a decent year, finishing in eighth above Tottenham, who did perhaps struggle without the uh, fire, excuse me, without the firepower of Harry Kane. You can see he was top goal scorer, 21 in the Premier League for England. So let's just have a look at each of the sides and see who was who were the key performers and who really stood out. So there you go then. So you can see England's primary goalkeeper was Jack Butland, 19 starts, so they they did move it around a bit, it'd be interesting to see, I don't know if any of these were injured, but maybe they did rotate, they've obviously got quite a few good goalkeepers there, strong characters, um, you know, so it really is a case of keeping them all happy, if they do want, if players want to leave, I suppose they might, I mean they've transfer listed Chris Smalling there, so... Yeah, so they're looking to move some of the players on. It looks as though the established back two was, uh, well, it looks as though it was Keane with a rotation of Maguire and Stones was the main man. Carl uh, Walker got the nod at right back more often than not with Ryan Bertrand ahead of uh, Danny Rose, which is interesting. Klein as well coming in and Trippier as well. And then really you've... Harry Dyer was key man, 41 games in all competitions. So Harry Kane also, 25 in his 43. Jamie Vardy only made one start, but he did score two goals. He had six sub-appearances. Danny Sturridge probably injured a lot. And Danny Welbeck as well. Bit part player, but 18 appearances all told. Four goals, not too bad. Ryan Sterling notched in with eight, and you can see as well, Deli Alley got 11. So it was a good core to the squad, which... which made England qualify for at least Europa League. They'd probably be a bit disappointed that they've only finished, at least they were out of it in goal difference, I suppose, over Arsenal, who, of course, inevitably finished fourth. So Wales just missed out on Europa League. England just qualified for the Europa League. Let's just have a quick look at the Wales side. So here's the Wales squad then. You see, we, we did talk about goals, but Sam Vokes, he notched in with 13 in 26 for, for Wales there. So that's not bad. That's pretty good. Obviously, you've got the quality of Gareth Bale out wide. There's seven assists and, and eight goals. But uh, don't know, Tom Lawrence, six goals, ten assists. He's done pretty well, even though his average rating is a little bit disappointing. So Wales have done okay. I think they've... They've rotated a little bit, but probably not as much as England have had to to keep everybody happy. So that's that's the Welsh. Let's have a quick look at the Scots. Goal's probably a problem. Lee Griffiths getting nine. That's not too bad, but then outside of that, it's only really Stephen Naismith who got eight, and he probably played up front most of the time as well. Um, after that, there's no real midfielders notching in with goals. You've got a few goals everywhere. So they've, they've probably got the problem in being able to score goals outside of the strikers and... Yeah, you can see as well their goalkeepers. They I would have expected them to use Craig Gordon pretty much exclusively, but he was actually the the goalkeeper. Out with David Marshall was the man who was chosen more, slightly more, and his average rating was significantly better. So Gordon must have struggled in the games. And let's just have a look at the Northern Ireland team before we look at the disastrous campaign for the Irish. And you can see that if you look at the ratings, the average ratings for a lot of these players is pretty low, and and their strike force as well for for Northern Ireland is not great. They've hardly scored any goals. And that's that'll be a huge disappointment for them. Uh, for somehow they've managed to stay up, probably through a, a tight and lean defence. Although you can look at the goalkeeping situation, they've not had many uh, good performances according to these ratings. You'd expect Northern Ireland probably be to the ones to be first in line to go down next year. And let's have a quick look at Ireland. This was the team that went down, finished rock bottom of the Premier League. Shane Long did score nine goals, but hardly any goals anywhere else outside of Johnny Walter scoring eight. So he, he obviously he knows the Premier League inside out, and uh, he did all right. You'd expect this team to come straight back up if they managed to keep it together. A few players, it looks as though, are requested to leave. But, you know, whether they actually do or not is, is up for debate, given that Ireland are still obviously going to be in transfer embargo. It's it's not feasible for them to to make additions as as they would need to if they were to if they were to lose those players. So as you say, it'll be interesting. They've they've all had youth intakes, 
I've not prevented any youth intake, so they may well have players coming through that are pretty good. You'd expect all other nations to probably have players from their own countries. There may be the odd one that slips through, but by the time they develop into a good enough player to reach the first team, chances are we'll be done with the save. Anyway, let's just have a look to see if any players did leave. You can see that uh, Ireland did loan out a couple of players. That's hardly any uh, of any relevance. England sold, or rather loaned out, Marcus Rashford to Napoli. That's interesting. So he must have asked for a move if he wasn't getting game time ahead of Mr. Harry Kane. In yeah, Scotland, they uh, sold Stephen Whittaker for a measly £110,000. Fair enough. And Wales didn't do any business. And the Northern Ireland side... Well, they did quite a bit, actually. They sold Paul Patton, Lee Hodson, and loaned out Carl Lafferty, Shane Ferguson, and Connor Washington. Carl Lafferty loaned out is a little bit of an odd one. I mean, he had a good season, all told. Seven goals for, for Peterborough in League One, though. So that's hopefully where Northern Ireland don't end up. So I think what we should do is we should just have a quick look to see how they got on against each other. Okay, so Northern Ireland, let's kick off with them. See, they're already here. They played... Uh, obviously, two games against each of these sides. They lost both to England. Uh, Northern Ireland at home, Windsor Park, the arena. England took the nearly lead down on the Lana before Stuart Dallas scored in the 41st minute. Craig Cathcart sent off, and that allowed Deli Alley to score a winner in the 75th minute. And then at Wembley, it was a late show. Phil Jones scoring in the 86th minute to give England the spoil. So, narrow wins for England in both occasions. The derby against Ireland predictably ending all square in both games. Uh, at uh, the Aviva, it was Johnny Walters who who gave the Irish the uh, the Southern or the Republic Irish the lead, and then Nam again equalising for the Northern Irish, and then the other in the reverse fixture it was Aidan McGeady who uh, got the got the goals just flying at Windsor Park before Carl Lafferty, the before mentioned Carl Lafferty, scored the equaliser against Scotland. Uh, 1 1 and drawn 1 at home. It was uh, an equaliser that was needed after a Lee Griffiths early penalty in the 8th minute before Stephen Davis. And then at uh, Hamden, it was coming from behind. James McArthur gave Scotland an early before Chris Brunt uh, with a penalty and Stephen Davis all in the first half, securing three points. And finally against Wales, two defeats, similar to Ireland. So at home, it was a 1 0 defeat. Sam Vokes in the 10th uh, minute and then a 3 0 defeat at the Millennium. Uh, Sam Vokes hat trick. So he scored four goals against Northern Ireland. That's. Pretty impressive. And uh, see as we've got Wales there. Let's have a look to see how they managed to, against the uh, the big nations. England, they got hammered at, uh, at Wembley. They lost four goals to one. Uh, David Brooks scoring, though, the consolation goal before Jesse Lingard added the fourth after Harry Kane scored a brace and Adam Lallana. And then at home, despite England losing Keenan Trippi in just the second minute, England managed to secure a 3-2 win. And uh, that was secured in the last minute of the game, really, from Jordan Henderson. Pretty good for them. And let's just have a look against their results against... Uh, we've already looked at the results against... No, we didn't. We looked at the results against Northern Ireland. So against Ireland, Wales managed to win one and draw one. 3-2 home win. And, yeah, not bad that. You can see there they went ahead. James Chester in the eighth minute, but then fell behind Wes Houlihan and, and Robbie Brady in the first half. So they, they trailed 2-1, but managed to turn it around with Tom Lawrence and David Edwards to win a three game 3-2. And then away at the Aviva. 2-2, Johnny Walters... Aaron Ramsey, Shane Long and Sam Vokes all in the first half. It's giving both sides a share of the spoils. And then Scotland, one win, one draw. At Hamden, a 3-3 draw in a thrilling Premier League game. All six first half goals and then nothing in the second half. How often does that happen in FM? But uh, Gareth Bale getting a goal and, da and both Fletchers, Darren and Stephen, securing points for both sides. And then at the Millennium, it was Ashley Richards that, or Jazz Richards, you should say. I think that is, uh, he gave Wales the victory there. And let's have a, look, a quick look at Scotland then, so there'll be less games to look at now. England, the uh, the old derby. England won both encounters. Sorry, Scotland fans. Despite Ryan Bertrand's red card in the 71st minute, England uh, hung on. Harry Kane and Raheem Sterling scoring in quick succession in the first 20 minutes before Stephen Fletcher on the hour mark getting a consolation as it turned out. And then at Wembley, a 2-1 win for England. Again, a red card. <laughs> Feisty affairs, these ones. Uh, Grant Hanley dismissed. That was after Lee Griffiths had given Scotland a first-half lead, but after half-time, two goals in quick succession. Harry Kane and Ike Dyer, the Tottenham connection there again, and that took the game away from the Scots. And I think we've already seen all of the other fixtures, haven't we? Um, I think the only one to check now is probably Scotland versus Ireland. I think that's it. So Scotland beat, yeah, Scotland beat Ireland. One goal to the Jordan Rhodes with the only goal of the game, and then away at the Aviva. It was three goals to one. A lot of red cards in these games. They don't like each other. I should say, I've given them all rivalries. You've got the fierce rivalries, the local rivalries, England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Ireland. 
but you've also got uh, historic rivalries. Less of a point so between all the other teams. So they will not like each other, so they should be quite explosive ties. Okay, so let's just have a quick look to see, did anybody manage to win a cup? So England won the Carabao Cup. Well done, England. You managed to win silverware. 2-0 home win. Home win? I suppose it was a home win uh, at Wembley over Manchester City. Two goals there. Adam Alano, Harry Maguire securing the points. A good performance from England by all accounts. It looks as though there. And who won the FA Cup? Obviously, there's no European action for either of these teams. Uh, for any of these teams, really. Um, next year, there will be. We'll have a bit of a look at the Europa League campaign for England. And... Yep, didn't progress in the FA Cup. Let's have a quick look at the semis. Who got furthest? Oh my, we're going to have to go all the way back to the quarters. And even further, these teams just did not go far. Where are you? Are they even in it? Oh yeah, yep, England's knocked out by Wolves. Who the thunk that? England lost to Wolves. Where are my other sides? Where are you? Ireland lost to Villa. Did they all go out in the third round? Can't be. Can't be, can't be, can't be. I'm gonna have Northern Ireland. What lost on a uh, one a replay against Hull, and I think I'm just looking for Wales and Northern Ireland, aren't I? So Wales lost to Bolton. <laughs> this sounds weird to me. Does it to you? So those are the cups. England will face off in the Europa League next year, so that's going to be interesting. Um, England have obviously got the forthcoming World Cup. We're not going to. Uh, go through that now what we'll do is we'll cover that at the end of the next season's video which will be episode two this one's gone on long enough so yeah if there's anything you particularly like to see in this experiment as to player performances uh you know specific teams how they've adapted without their players so i mentioned tottenham uh man city have been uh, a little bit uh, a little bit flawed manchester united as well so if you, there's anything particularly you'd like to see, do pop it in the comments, do let me know, and we'll have a look at that. And otherwise, I'd just like to thank you very much for watching. Do pop a like on the video, subscribe if you're not already. There'll be more of this coming soon, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.